Yep, I'm at a different angle again. I'm still trying to figure all my angles out. Anyway, let's get these out of the way since you can't see what I'm doing. I can't see what I'm doing now, but you can't see what I'm doing with them in the way. There is a lady in my town who gets a lot of subscription boxes. And the stuff she doesn't necessarily want, she sells off. Now, I mentioned this in a different video where I was talking about stuff I collected, but today I'm actually going to use some of the stuff that I got from her. And one of the pieces that I picked up is the Butter London Natural Goddess that was in one of the um, boxy charms. And this has got some gorgeous colors, but I got to tell you, there's two mats. This one and this one. Everything else is shimmer. Now, I don't mind doing a whole shimmer look, but, you know, I'd like a couple different choices. I mean, Temptress, which is the darker one, is kind of a chocolatey brown. Femme Fatale is definitely a peacock teal. I mean, and that is it for the mats. Just flat it. Now, I have been playing with this a little bit. And I came up with a reasonable look the other day. So I'm going to try and repeat it. We'll see how that goes. Anyway, let's get started. Yes, the face has been moisturized and all that lovely stuff. And I have picked out the stuff that I'm probably going to be using for the next couple of weeks. You know, blusher, and highlight, brow product, and all that other stuff. I'm trying to keep my stuff on rotation. And, yeah, the white base is back in the box. And I've got... This one, which the bottle is shaped a bit like the um, Primer Potion. That's Urban Decay, right? I think. Anyway, it's just a basic beige by a company called Kiss. And it's Ruby Kisses Eye Primer. The only thing ruby about it is the color of the tube, so. No, I don't have any eyebrows on yet. I've taken recent, fairly recently to doing my eyebrows after I do my eye makeup because I have been known occasionally to do the eyebrows and I have done the eyebrows really intensely and then I do a really subtle look with the eye with the eyeshadow and I go hmm yeah that ain't it that ain't it Jack so what I am going to do is I'm gonna get a fairly fluffy but an angled brush and I'm going to start with the teal color, the Femme Fatale. I'm trying to keep from blinding you with the mirror. And I'm just going to start working this across. Now, one of the things that I noticed with this palette is that even just tapping it a little bit, you can pick up quite a bit of dust in the pan. So you've got a chance for having to deal with fallout. Why I decided to start doing this this way I don't know. I picked up the palette. I looked at it, and this is what I did. Now, 
Now, to finish this thing off, I've got four different shimmers. I've got a white bronze, an olive green, a deep pinky red, and then a pinky gold. And I'm going, I don't know which one I'm going to use. So, we will have to see how that goes as we get there. Now, let's not forget I have hooded lids. The best explanation and most thorough explanation for hooded lids is on 4F Beauty. Miss Angie is wonderful at explaining it. She has deep set eyes. So she has some of the problems that you have with hooded eyes. When you open your eyes all the way up, the skin folds and shimmers transfer and glitter gets transferred and things crease. You also have to be careful where you put your colors to make sure they're high enough to be seen. when you've got your eyes open. See, if I relax my eyebrows and just open my eyes, you really cannot see the mobile lid. It's because this extra skin that's up here just rolls down over it like a Roman shade, which is really annoying. It's one of the reasons I don't do a lot of the cut creases and the halo stuff and all this where you've got all these like spotlights and stuff down here on the mobile lid because my mobile lid just disappears when my eyes are open. Now I can do things like I just did hamming around there and pull my eye, my eyebrows up, you know, and then you get some creases in here. But having your eyebrows up makes your eyes look more wide and awake. Now, see, I just tapped like this. And that's getting some powder up in there, in that brown. Now with the brown, I'm just kind of swirling it into the corner here instead of trying to do specific defined shape. Because that's what I did the other day while I was playing. I was playing with techniques and all this other stuff. You know, stuff that you see when you're watching other people's films. And you try different things to see if it'll work for you. That's why you need to support your local content creator. You learn something. You get to learn something. You pick up different techniques. Learn about new colors. Learn about different formulas. Learn about where you can find a dupe now and then. If you don't have the money for like, you know, one of the really high-end ones, but there's somebody who does a dupe. There's companies like C Color and Alter Ego and A couple of them got their hands smacked in that thing where Shop Hush disappeared. One of the dupers got a little too frisky with somebody's stuff and got their willy whacked. All right. Now, if you were here, or we were doing this live, I would be going, all right, guys, pick some. 
As it is, I think I'm going to pick this one. Because I want to see what the color looks like. It's like, yes, I've done the little swatchy things. Swatches don't look like anything near what it really looks like. And yes, I have gotten off of my tushy and reset, redone my homemade setting spray. So I'm going to pick up some of that dark pinky gold. And it's called Queen. The matte teal is Femme Fatale. The cocoa brown matte is Temptress. I love making my own spritzer because the biggest thing about setting sprays that help it keep things together is the glycerin they put in it. I've got a bottle that's twice the size of this one that's vegetable glycerin that I picked up for five bucks. Okay? And to make this homemade version of the setting spray, I only need that much of the glycerin. I mean, we're talking a little bit. The rest of it's water and witch hazel. You can use whatever toner you prefer. I use witch hazel. And yeah, some of the other setting stuff is just great, and it's wonderful, and it's beautiful, and it's your old favorite standby. But the ones made by cosmetic companies are usually significantly more expensive than what this is costing me. I've got some basic, I mean basic, witch hazel. You know, the stuff you get, and it's just a plain square bottle, kind of like the alcohol for cleaning up a little scrape or cut or something. And I only need, like, that much of that. The rest of it's water. And no, I don't get fancy filtered water or anything like that. We've got some pretty good tap water here. It doesn't taste bad. It doesn't smell funny. And I'm perfectly happy to use it doing this. So, you know, there you go. This one again. Do a little swirly there. Don't want to have too many harsh lines going on. You know, if you're doing something specific that you really want the colors define and you want a sharp edge that's great but if you're not looking for a sharp edge do your blending it doesn't take but a couple of seconds and if you find one of your colors is farther over than you intended it to be it's real easy to just pick up the brush with the other color on it and go squeaky squeaky Now, yeah, I'm going to take Enchantress, which is that palest kind of champagne color. And I'm going to put that on the hone in that inner corner. Now, 
Now, when you're spraying this stuff, remember to dry your ferrule. If you do not know what it is that I am speaking of, it's the metal piece on your brush. Because what you do not want is to have any excess fluid running down inside that ferrule that could possibly disturb the glue that is holding your brush together. Don't do it. When you wash your brushes, make sure you dry them so that the tips, the, the bristles are headed down. You want any brush shampoo or whatever that you've put on the brushes to help you clean them, you want to make sure that that is also not running down inside this little metal piece and, in, and, and affecting the glue. You lose the glue, you've lost your brushes. Okay. Good start. Looking good so far. I'm going to pop off for a couple of minutes. Checking to make sure I've got my controller where it belongs. Pop off for a couple of minutes. Put some face on my face. Put some face into place. And I will be right back. Alrighty. I've got my base in place. Itchy. Basically all I did, which is something I've been doing for a bit now, is just doing the filming where I'm not actually planning to go anywhere. I put some concealer on the red patches in the skin and then just use a basic face powder. Now, this is my poor beleaguered elf face powder. And I just love this stuff. This is the Prime and Stay Finishing Powder in Light Medium. I have not only panned it, I have broke the poor thing. But, I'm going to use it till it's gone. One of the things I did while I was picking my stuff for this week to go into rotation is I started plucking through my e.l.f. products and I noticed some of my stuff was starting to get, you know, it's a little old, it's getting a little, you know, time to think about replacing it, like the some of my mascaras and such. And, you know, even though there's still quite a lot of the pomade and powder in this little brow compact, the cream does start to get dry after a bit. You can usually revive it with a little bit of good face oil, or like I use the uh, couple of drops of the vegetable glycerin. But, after a while, you can't really revive it. And once the pomade part starts to get that hard and crumbly, there's not going to be anything for the powder to stick to. Plus, since you're using the same brush for the powder and the pomade, you start getting patches of hard pan in the powder, which is one of the reasons that even though I like this stuff a lot, and I like the color, and the color suits me, I am probably going to be sticking to the brow pencils from here on, because they don't 
go off as quick. Now, don't at me about the shape and condition of my brows. Kindly remember, I'm blind at this point. Okay, now I've got my face powder on. I'm going to take, let's see, I'm going to use my brown pencil here, elf pencil, and do the waterline just a little. One of the things I like most about the e.l.f. pencils is they have a sharpener. So when you're done or before you start, you can give it a quick twist and make sure you've got a sharp, clean point. And I'm going to pick up some of that Shimmer Queen Shade, which is the darker one, with the gold, with the red and gold to it. I'm going to carry that all the way in on that lower lash line. Because I think it's pretty. No, I'm not spritzing it. Now, it's up to you whether or not you want to spritz it. I don't spritz that part, even though it's a shimmer. I don't spritz it because I have a terrible tendency of sticking my brush in my eye. And I don't want the setting spray in there. That jingle you heard was my puppy dog saying, please, can I go outside? Well, I wanted a puppy dog, but that usually sets off both of them. So my beloved husband is now wandering down the hall with the puppies. Right, that, take that same brown that I've been using in the corner. Doggies, please go outside and stop shaking the table. That's a 10 pound dog that shook that table as he went by. 10 pounds. Wooden floors. Uneven. Not terrible, but the house was, bo was born in the 30s, so yes, the house was born. Not a heavy smoke, but a little bit smoky. And then, let's see, where did I play? It's in here somewhere. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. At least I think it. Okay, this is an LA Colors, and it's one of the gel pencils, one of the screw-ups. And I'm going, don't pull your eyes, 
Yes, I'm going to. I have very crepey eyes at this point. Because I are old. Alright, I'm not that old. I'm only 61. But when the crepe skin, or as some people call it, the chicken skin, gets started, you're, you're S-O-L. And if you do pull, pull very, very gently. You do not need to stretch it back to your ear. Now, this is not going to be a perfect line. Like I said, my eyes are crepey, so we get skips. Plus, it's a pencil, not a liquid. So then I take something like one of these little short shaders, and I just kind of give it a little smudge. So that it's not so defined, because if it's not defined that much, nobody can tell you made a boo-boo. They just see this kind of a dark glow behind your lashes and go, oh, it's liner. Hey, well, I'm not going to tell. I am surely not going to tell. Okay, now I'm going to get my elf bronzer palette. Yes, I'm trying to not blind you. <laughs> and now see, there's, there's a glittery one here and a glittery one here and a matte and a matte. I don't know why they had to do that. I don't get it. But I take the darker mat that's down in the corner and have a tendency to run it down this way. Up as far as this little, I've got a little bit of definition. And believe me, it took years to get that little bit of definition. It really did. Because I used to weigh significantly more than I do now. And I run some of the dark stuff under here to try to convince myself that it's hiding the double chin. Yeah, lie to me again, baby. I love it. I know better. But when you start off your weight loss journey being at 450 plus, and have lost a whole other person, you kind of have some issues you try to convince yourself aren't really there by playing with makeup, maybe doing a little contour here and there, trying to convince people that, yes, you don't just have saggy places. Mostly I'm trying to convince myself. The other problem is, though, at 61, regardless of whether you are on the larger side or the smaller side, at that point you're starting to look at some of, some of this stuff is going to droop. The chicken skin is going to be on the eyes. And... Yeah, you can, if you've got the money, you can go crazy with being one of them people that gets nuts about all kinds of fix-it-ups. This is my, my Laura Geller blush that came in a, a mystery box swap that I did with Miss Nona. I love that it's gorgeous. The color is beautiful. Just absolutely beautiful. It's one of the baked marbles. And it's with the color mix. 
It's gorgeous. It's not too shiny. It's not too dull. It's practically perfect. There's nothing really perfect, but it's practically perfect. Anyway, now, at this point, before I get nuts and do things like put on the mascara, oh, this is a commercial one. This is a commercial setting spray. I think CoverGirl is doing a, a change in labeling or something with this because this was at a one of the discount stores near me that, that had it for two bucks. And I'm going, yes! 3.4 fluid ounces of all day setting mist in cucumber. Yes! Love it. Now, I'm going to get to work on the mascara. Now, if you guys are elf fans, but you forevermore had a little issue with them, about things like their shade range in foundation go look they've had an expansion in foundation shades if I remember I will put a picture from their website up here somewhere so you can see what I'm talking about. I almost fell out of the chair. Because I remember when I first started getting ELF, there were maybe six or eight shades. And most of them, I could find my, my winter shade and my summer shade pretty quick. However, as convenient as that is, that is seriously not inclusive. And it bugged me. And it's bugged a lot of people. So, a lot of us have told them repeatedly for a long time that it was a issue. that they did not have an inclusive shade range at all. It was just really pale. And somewhere along the line, they got the clue. No, it is not perfect yet. I don't know that it'll ever be perfect. However, we have a significant expansion. It's not, like I said, it's not perfect. It really isn't. But it's so much better, you got to at least give them their props. you got to give them where credit is due. And you know, at least pat them on the back a little bit. Got my hairbrush. Pat them on the back a little bit about the effort, so that maybe they'll keep working on it. Oh, look at all that static! Yes, it's winter. Can you tell? <laughs> Oh. 
Let's see. What am I going to put on? I need my lippy. No. Not that one. That ain't it. What the heck? I'll put this one on. It's just gold. A little pink stuck in it from one of the last times I used it and used it as a topper. Not terribly metallic. Now, this is a clean color. I picked up a clean color set off of God Help Me Amazon. And Oh, these wonderful fall colors. There's this gold, and then there's one called cranberry, and then there's the soft rose, and then there's two versions of chocolate. And I love it. They're creamy, and they stay put mostly. Yes, it's a lipstick. You will have to put it on again. That's how it works. But, There you go. Butter London. Kind of neat. Tell me what you think. Now, I'll give you another little update here on some stuff. I just got finished with a history class at college. Passed with an A-. minus. And I'm starting a writing class for this next session. And let me give you a clue. The professor scares me pantless. He's been writing quite some time. And he's well published. And that's scary. It really is because this is a writing specific course so yeah it's going to get interesting i'm still trying to decide if i'm going to do the NaNoWriMo and in anybody who doesn't know what that is it's national novel writing month which runs from november 1st to the 30th to complete a novel during that month, you have to write 50,000 words. That's the minimum for novel length. In 2006 and 2007, I managed to do it. Things have changed significantly since then. No, way big time. I forgot to put the highlight on. Oh, shame on me. I'll do that while I'm talking about this. Anyway, let me guarantee you, if I decide I'm doing the NaNoWriMo, you're going to be lucky if you get a video a week for all of November. The only way to do it, unless you get really, really lucky and go over your minimum for the day is you have to put 2,500 words on the page every damn day. Every day. It is not easy. You can get started in all seriousness plan to actually make it and something will happen. You'll either end up with a character rebellion, writer's block, your family decides to have the flu and invite you to it, um, all sorts of things. I still haven't decided if I'm going to try it because at this point I've also got a rather writing intense class for the next eight weeks. <laughs> I'll let you know. 
Tell me what you think. Halloween's in another couple of days. I don't know. This may not get up until Halloween. We don't know. Till next time, be good.